show tonight is all ready to go. So I got my dial pad queued up, and I'm going to get my phone ringing here. And we're going to be talking with Mr. Carl Parisian. He's going to be uh, fighting here April 4th, taking on Rick Hahn at Bella 25. <laughs> I know these guys have competed before in some judo tournaments. Yeah, hello. Hey, good evening, Carl. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Are you? Hey, it's Big Perm with Uncensored MMA. How are you, man? Good, man. How are you? I'm alive and kicking, brother. I'm doing well. I'm just sitting here on a Monday night talking to you, so it's gotten a whole lot better in the last time I do. <laughs> nice. Well, Carl, listen, you're here with me, and I got my co-host as well, uh, Dave the Butcher Clifford. Uh, Dave, are you there, bud? Yeah, absolutely. Welcome to the show. It's uh, great to catch up with you. I'm looking forward to seeing the April 4th as well, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Well, Carl, as, as I was introducing you, I was telling folks about your fight coming up uh, against Rick Hahn at Bellator 95. Um, I know you guys have competed before in some judo stuff, but uh, never never in an MMA match. So I just was kind of wondering, you know, what, what, uh, what we're going to see from you inside that cage once the doors close, bud. <laughs> well, there's only one way to find out is when I step in that cage, but uh, you're going to see... Let's just put it this way, man. I mean, I always pray and I train. I hope the outcome is good. But all I can tell you is that you'll see the car that you saw maybe five years ago, four, four or five years ago. Um, on my weights back up, I've been training hard. I'm very healthy. Let's put it that way. And um, I'm excited about this matchup, man. I think everything's falling into place and everything goes as planned. God willing, I'm going to put a beating on this guy. Well, that's a great answer. And one of the things that I, I wanted to touch upon with your, you know, signing with Bellator is the great thing about Bellator is, is you show up and you have a couple of good fights, you get in a tournament. You win that tournament, well, you get a shot at yeah. the belt. You, you don't have to give good interviews. You don't have to call somebody out. You don't have to kiss anybody's ass. You just have to go out there, do you, and win. Is that? Do you like that? I mean, tell me about that, how that feels to, to be in a place where now you can earn a title shot. Well... I got offered to do the tournament, I think, a couple of times from Bellator. But the timing in my in my life was pretty pretty off, man. I wasn't I wasn't there mentally, I wasn't there physically. I just was not there for me to pick up a, a tournament then because I know that if um if I come back as my normal self and train and you know, get back to what I used to do before, make it a lifestyle what my training, my fighting was, I'm pretty sure I would have won the tournament. Um, I don't know about the title which, you know, I have all the tools and everything else to take anything away from everybody. But um, at the time being, I didn't take take, take the tournament. A couple of times they offered. And uh, surprisingly, the last time they offered me to fight the tournament was the one they had, I think it was January, beginning of the year, the 17th or something. And we tr- I turned that one down, too, just because, like I said, I was not there in my life. I had a lot of stuff in front of me. I had to, uh, uh, you know, Oversee a little bit in, in past before I can take up take on a task like that as far as in my career, and then so I I was I told myself I even talked to my agent and they were like I don't think they ever that they won't come to me anymore, most likely it's the third third time we're we're, we're we're you know we're turning him down, and then all of a sudden I get a call they're like oh you want to fight Rick on this this you know six weeks out, um, I was like sure I'll take the fight you know I was. I had already finished everything behind me. Everything was, you know, all that crap that was going on in my life. Everything was is behind me for the first time in four or five years. I can say everything is behind me, and I'm looking forward. And uh, I see a light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, I'm really excited about this. I mean, I really am. Um, I don't know what to expect just because my mind is so much better right now, and everything is so much better. But, you know, we'll see. There's only one way to find out. All I'm doing is training. I haven't missed one practice, man. I've been training every God-given day, mornings, nights, and stuff like that, you know, with my old camp with, you know, with Go-Kart and High Stand Club. So we'll see how that goes, man. Well, Carl, that's what I was going to ask you about next was uh, the High Stand Academy and Go-Kart and, and all those guys that you train with down there. Um, you know, you've been with Go-Kart for a long time, man. Um, it's – if he – is he really been integral, you know, in, in getting you back on track and, and getting you focused and ready for this one? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, 
I have a better relationship with Gokar now. We didn't have a good relationship for about six years. It's when I I left on a really bad note, almost like you know argument and a fight, and I left I left the club like that. And then you know, and then I heard for six years he wanted to talk to me from from everybody from from Manny and from my other guy Sako and everybody else in the Ultimate Fighter Roman. All these guys were saying, "Listen, he wants to talk to you. You know, come back. Let's just talk." So finally, I came back and. You know, he got older, I got older, you know, when I'm not a kid no more. And, you know, you think different. You know, you start to acknowledge stuff a little bit more about people, your coach. And I think he acknowledges me and respects, you know, the fact that I'm not fucking 17 anymore. And right. uh, we have a really good relationship right now, man. So, yeah, he's excited. He thinks I'm doing great. Um, he, he's, we, we have a camp going morning at night. He's always there. He's always next to me. The thing about Gokar, man, is that Gokar has known me. I mean, I've been with him for 23 years. He knows me very well. He knows what I can do. I'll tell you this. My entire career, every time I fought, even if the guy looked like a monster, which I always fought monsters, and 90% of them I beat him, he never <laughs> broke my confidence. He always gave me the balls. He, never, he always said, you can beat any of these guys. These guys don't have your skill set. These guys don't have your heart or your guts. And he, he, he would always say that, man. And that's the one thing about Goku, because Goku wouldn't, I mean, he's a good coach, but every other guy, he was really honest. He was like, you know, you got to train for this guy, or, you know, this guy might, might do this to you. You have to be ready. So when it came to me, he always told me, no, nah, these guys can't beat you. You're too good for these guys. You know, and that's the good thing about Goku. Has. So we have a good relationship now. You know, I'm back to my old school. You know, basically, I'm 30 years old. I got like six, six years in me at least to, you know, mess people up again in the cage. So, right, it's like I'm reborn again, man. I'm reborn again in every way, guys. I mean, I'm ta- when I tell you I'm reborn, not just being back in my old club, reborn in my life, you know. And uh, it sounds fucking cheesy and bitchy, but I'm just, you know, right. it, it's the right word to say, you know. I'm no. like, I feel like I'm a yeah. new person. It doesn't, time, sound, you know? it doesn't sound like, yeah, not to cut you off either, but that does not sound bitchy or shitty to me. You know what I, you know what I hear coming out of everything that you said is a person who has learned who he is. Yes. Yes. You know, you find it's uh, good. Yeah, man, you guys know I do an interview. I'll tell you this. It's funny you said that. It's because after a while, when you go through all this stuff in your life, man, you you start to learn something about yourself too, which is when people would say, say this stuff to me, I would never believe them. I was like, ah, whatever, man. You know, it's kick shit. Don't, don't, you know, whatever. But after a while, you know, when you calm down and you look at life and your career and yourself from a different point of view, you start to see yourself and you start to learn about something by yourself that you had. Some, I'll tell you this, man. You don't know how strong you are until you have no other choice. And I've felt that many times in the fight where I don't have no other choice, but I somehow edge it out. And I just, my biggest fight was within me until a few months ago. Was it, and, I, and I fought myself. Let's just put it this way. For four four years, five years, I was walking around 168, 172, fighting at 170 guys just to put, collect a paycheck. Really, really bad and not, not there, unhealthy. You know, and now I'm like 194, bro, 190. You know, what a welterweight should be walking around. What I, what I used to walk around was 85, 90. You know, that was my weight, 95. You know, that's why I used to cut down to 170. That means I'm healthy, you know, my muscles are there, my strength's there, and all that stuff, you know? So everything's going good so far. Well, I, it, I just hope it, yeah, it sounds like a recipe. It sounds like a recipe for victory in a lot of ways. Number one, that there's a league that has finally just kicked in the door and said, look, there's more ways to do this. Now they've got a presence on Spike TV, and, of course, I'm talking about Bellator and Bjorn Redney and his crew there. They they do a great job, as I'm sure you know. Their, their relationship that they build with people. And that you even just uh, gave us a great example by the fact that they called you four times and waited until you knew you were ready to give you this fight. And like I said, number two earlier, you have a tournament style. You can get a couple wins. You can go show them and show yourself and show the world. Anybody who wants to watch that you're ready again and that you're, you know, like, like I said, all welterweights I know walk around about 195. So to hear that from you is great news, brother. So you, things are going for you, man. I mean, that's got to feel good. Hey, listen, um, uh, I don't know. With all the respect, I don't know what the radio is called. I don't know, you know, I don't know any any of you guys and stuff, but I'll tell you this right now. I don't know from today on how my career is going to go. I really don't know. I'm being completely honest, but I'll tell you this. 
you guys are the first people I'm really giving a solid interview as far as the radio in the past five years where I can come on and say truthfully down to my core of my heart, man, that, you know, whatever I'm saying this, it's all it's the truth. I'm not lying about anything. Before, in the last four years, when I used to do interviews about certain stuff, you know, th- there was always something in me that I knew I was not there. I was not healthy. I wasn't training. I had so much problems. I had so much on my plate. Man, if, I, if anybody saw my life, you guys wouldn't believe it, man. You guys wouldn't think I'm a fucking liar. I mean, seriously, I'm like, I was a walking zombie. I didn't care about anything anymore. Seriously. But, you know, at the time being... I'm doing this interview, and I'm telling you guys, honestly, down to my core, man, I'm not, I'm not lying about anything that I'm, I feel good about a lot of stuff right now. Like I said, I don't know about anything, how anything's going to, you know, work. I mean, you know, muscle memory has its things, and I know that I can do what I want to do, what I've done before, and I just hope the timing is perfect because I don't want to jump ahead before your questions, guys, but I heard that Rick Hahn called me out in this fight. And I don't know. I heard it from apparently his girlfriend, uh, or I think his fiance, posted it on one of the one of the interviews that we did. And I don't know. Apparently he he called me out. That's why I was surprised when Bellator called me again a month later when I turned him down the third time. You know. So I don't know. I it's great. I I love it. You know. It's really good. Well, and that's something I wanted to ask you about, Carl. Was uh, was was. The, the the back and forth between you and Rick Hahn and I had mentioned earlier that you guys you guys had competed before in judo competition right yeah all right and and with this being MMA I mean it's a completely different animal um, the things that he said you know I mean it kind of came out of left field I don't know um, had there been a rivalry between you guys that was really you know really hot back in the judo days where you know he would say something like that no 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 I'll tell you listen I'll be I'll be honest with you um, I probably Rick Hahn was a judo guy. I was a judo guy. We go head to head in, in judo tournaments. We, I was in the Olympic trials like he was. Uh, he went to the right. Olympics. I went to the UFC. I, I picked up my judo and, and tried to make a career out of it. I was top four in the country m- most of my career, and he was one of them also. So it was a battle between me and three of me, Han and two or three other guys, you know, always back okay. and forth. Um, but I probably talked to this dude five seconds in my entire life. That's it. And then it wasn't it wasn't even anything. And then four or five years ago, one of my friends called me. He goes, "Dude, who is this fucking Rick Hong guy?" I'm like, "What do you mean? I know him. What about him?" <laughs> he goes, "Well, he's like, dude, he's he's talking. He's doing an interview, and he's really disrespectful towards you." I'm like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Well, what do you say?" Oh, he's don't compare me to that guy. I'm this. I'm that. That guy is Aaron Kid. That guy rubs me the wrong way. And I'm like, "Oh, he probably grew balls in the last few years. I haven't known." Right. right? <laughs> so. You know what that shows me? That was a shitty interviewer because he shouldn't ask about the because the only other guy he probably knows about that that did judo is you. So he could, he probably fucking made up a dumb question and then he probably was thinking, well, fuck that. You know what I mean? So I bet you you get brought up to him a lot. You probably don't even know it because there you know to most people that do this and you know I'm not trying to shit any other radio shows, but fuck them at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Most guys don't give a shit. They don't know nothing, man. They're like, oh, judo, kill Parisian. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's all you got? And so I bet you that fucking guy gets asked about you all the time and you just finally had enough, don't you think? I never thought about that. Uh, I don't know. And I'm not, I'm not blaming or saying anything to anybody, but, you know, sure. you can ask me about Ronda Rousey 15,000 times, a girl that I've helped, and I've, she's like a little sister to me, and I will never change my answer about her. But I don't care what he says. Right. Just what the fuck he wants to say. Great, no problem. Yeah. Any more reason to kick your That's ass? That's right. It's all good. That's uh, right. All this stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said this stuff, right, bro, man. and I was like, okay, no problem. And then, and then he says, I rub him the wrong way, and then he says, don't compare me to that guy. I'm like, dude, okay, don't compare. Okay, I won't be compared to you. Okay, you. I don't know what you are. But you stupid Momo, let's think about this way. I put you on the fucking map because of idiots. I put the judo on the map of people like you, man. I've done judo. I think you're a judo bar, especially if we compete in the same level to somewhat. I think you should be, you know, not say, oh, I don't like Carl. Okay, school Carl, but you know what? I respect his ability, and he put judo on the map. He's a judo car, so I respect it. I don't like Rickon. I like his, but I'll say, you know, until now, I will say I respect his, uh, 
is fighting. I respect his judo. I do. As a, as an athlete, I respect him. As a person, sure. he looks like a possum to me. He's, I don't like that motherfucker. Yeah. I don't like anything about him. Yeah. Because I, I never say anything bad about him, but he's been talking shit about me. I don't know why. But I told him, if I rub you the wrong way, come April 4th, I'm going to rub you the really wrong way. Dude, I want to rub you so bad in that cage, you know, it might even get sexual. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, man. Oh, that's the shit. Man, well, that's fucking you, great, dude. You had made mention, Carl, so, here a second ago about, uh, about Ronda Rousey. Um, and that was something I was going to ask you about, you know, just... Um, with what she's, you know, now done in the UFC and then where women's MMA is going, I just, you know, wanted to, to get your word on Ronda and, and what you thought of her and what she's doing these days. Oh, well, I mean, Ronda, she, she's great, man. I mean, she's doing good. She's kicking ass. I can't fucking believe the last word I heard about them. They have Ronda and they got these coaches and guys in Ultimate Fighter. That's going to be, that's going to be, that might actually be one ultimate fighter I might tune in every now and then to watch just because they got girls and guys. In the Speaking of out. getting sexual. Yeah. <laughs> right? How many episodes? How many episodes till the first hookup? Uh, uh, I guarantee you, maybe two, three. Maybe I two. Guarantee yes, you, sir. Maybe. But I'm glad I'm not in that house, man. I, I Seriously. I, I mean, imagine, dude, being away from, being away from TV any kind of electronic shit where you can relax yourself and all women, and then all of a sudden be in the house for six weeks where there's girls. I mean, come on, bro. This, you got to put two and two together. They want drama. These yep. people want drama. That's what's what fucking gonna sell. Oh, and yeah. you know, they're not stupid. They're smart. They know what they're doing. And it's, I guarantee you, it's gonna be the most watched Ultimate Fighter in history. And I'm telling you, I don't even watch Ultimate Fighter. I can care less about it. But I might even tune in every now and yeah, then just to watch what the fuck they're doing, you know? But as far yeah, as Ronda dude. goes, That's great. she's been yeah, she's been doing great, man. Ronda's awesome. I'm really proud of her. Um every now and then Rhonda lately just got trying to get she's been I've been seeing a little bit of different side of her, but not towards me. You know, she's always been very respectful and you know, very nice to me. But you know you know, I'll tell you this guys. Whomever starts becoming someone any kind of athlete, actor, actress, singer, whatever the heck they are, I think they should have somebody in Radio host. Huh? <laughs> Radio host. Huh? Radio host? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Radio yeah. host? No, I don't know about it. Um, they should have someone next to them. They should have someone next to them, bro, that'll tell these people to always have their minds set right, to always be humble, you know, always have you know, the right things to say about people, not get their nose up in the air and get all cocky. Not not that I'm saying she's cocky or anything. Everybody, you know, when you're good in something, after a while, cockiness grows in you like a tumor. But it's like, you know, I'm I'm a co- I'm cocky too. I'm not going to, I can be cocky, I can be arrogant too, but I'm not a dick about it, I'll just tell you that. I'm not, I'm not an asshole right. you'll get off the phone and say, he's a fucking asshole. I'm not like that. I'll be, I'll <laughs> tell you, I'll, hey, I'm a cocky motherfucker, I'm sorry guys, you know, whatever. But I'm willing to oh, whatever. women, you know, but I don't know, she's sure. doing great, I'm proud of her, she's going, she's, she's awesome, man, she's, she's going to do great. I'm really proud of her as far as an athlete and a person. Yeah, she really does prove uh, in in a very, easy and and well seen and much watched way how you can set up great submissions with unbelievable judo skills i'm always well, i got a lot i got a couple of friends who are really into it so i i respect that very much i would like to see her do some more throws when it comes to the fight i haven't really seen her do any throws at all but it's her base it's his judo base that's pretty strong and she's able to scramble these bitches down on the ground and arm bar them you know and uh She's doing pretty well, man. She really is. Uh, I don't know who's going to beat her. I really don't know who's going to beat this chick. The only girl that had a chance to beat her was Cyborg, and, you know, she's got too much steroids in her. So I don't know what the hell is without yeah. that chick. But <laughs> yeah, it's too much. That don't work. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, Carl, Carl, that's our boxing bell, and that signifies that we get just about a minute or so left with you. And I got a fun question I want to ask you before we turn you loose with sponsors and anybody you want to thank. All right. If there was tag team, if there was tag team MMA, who would you pick as your partner and who would you guys want to fight open weight? Oh my God. 
<laughs> Damn. Any, I can pick anybody? Yep. Yes, sir. Whew. Damn, we got a minute. Damn. Um, I like to get Kane Velasquez as a heavyweight uh, yeah. tag team. Mm, I'm a welterweight. And maybe 85. I'll, I'll get the best guys, obviously, Anderson Silva. Uh, who's a 205er that's really good? Oh, yeah, John Jones. I'll get all those guys, of course. You got to get the best nice. guys. You know? That's about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Great match. Oh, we killed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. Well, listen, Carl, um, we really just want to say thanks, brother, for taking the time to join us tonight, and, and we wish you the best of luck here coming up April 4th. And before we let you go, man, I just wanted to give you, you know, give you the air one last time to, you know, thank any sponsors and, and tell the listeners, you know, how they can stay in touch with you. Oh, um, stay in touch? I don't even know, man. I got Twitter and I got all this stuff, but I don't really get on it that much. My agents are on it for me. Uh, sorry to say that, but um, <laughs> right on. that's all right. I think whoever sponsored me, uh, upcoming fight, I got I got a couple of big sponsors sponsoring me. I I I really don't know their their name. I'm really sorry. I appreciate them. One second of all, my club, highest end team, my uh, sports agency, Apex. Apex, I don't know what it is, Jason Chambers and all those guys, uh, they've been stuck by me in the last three years, and you know, they haven't given up on me. Um, and all the fans, you know, like I said, I hope this is, a, this is a big break for me to show people that, honestly, you know, uh, win or lose, I want to walk in the cage and I want to perform and make people happy, and I want people to say, oh, yeah, he's back. But I'm not looking for a single second to lose to Rick Hahn. But, you know, with all the respect, I hope it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting fight. Um, Tune in, man. All I can say, and I appreciate you guys. Thanks for getting me on the radio. Hey, and once thank again, you too, man. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this interview, man. We really appreciate it. And uh, again, April 4th, man. The heat is back, baby. Uh, we will talk to you later, Carl. And best of luck, man. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye bye. All righty, gang. That was Mr. Carl Parisian fighting April 4th at Bellator 95, taking on Rick Hahn and, uh, yeah, I would definitely say that the uh, the Heat is stoked and ready for battle, boy. He's ready to uh, he's ready to bring it for Mr. Rick Hahn. And what a great candid interview that dude is ready to fight. You can definitely tell um, there's a there's a very humble, able warrior that we just spoke with right there. My hats off to Carl Parisian, and I wish him the best of luck. And now I'm rooting for him. Absolutely, man. Um, you know. Carl back in the day, you know, was uh, was a title contender, man. Um, and then, you know, as he mentioned, and very candidly so, um, you know, he just wasn't in the right place. You know, he had to had to get some things together. And uh, you know, he's he's back with Gokar and the crew, um, training there at the High Stand Academy. And uh, he's very focused individual, man. And it's going to be an exciting fight. And I, I, you know, I know he's got a three fight deal here. <clears throat> so I'm hoping, you know, after a win or two, that we do see him in a tournament, and you know, he gets a shot at that belt, man finally get himself a shot well, at the yeah, and, and that's the place to do it. You know, and that's a great thing that Bjorn is providing for the fighters at Bellator tournament. 